Hey, hi. How you going? I love handheld consoles. I adore handheld consoles. I'm obsessed with handheld consoles. It's how I play video games 90% of the time at this point. And now that we're at a point where we can literally put a powerful PC into our hands, I couldn't be happier. A lot of you know, I really liked the ROG Ally. I have a whole video on this. Well, ROG were nice enough to send over the ROG Ally 2, the ROG Ally Pro, the ROG Ally, I don't actually know what it's called. I actually know very very little about this. They asked if I wanted to check it out. They sent over a ton of information. I forgot <laughs> it showed up today. And I'm just gonna open it. Oh, there's a little uh, post-it note on this that says tested. <laughs> I'm glad it was tested. Oh, ROG Ally X, that's what it's called. Oh, wow. The buttons here are like blue, purple, lavender, and like a dark blue, and I really love it. I also love the black. Oh my gosh. That looks so much nicer than the white. This thing looks so sleek. Now, will he turn on? No. All right, I'm gonna let this thing finish booting up. I gotta install things on it. I wanna spend a week or two with it before I make a video, so see you then. I'm gonna be completely honest. I was not going to make this video. I was sent the ROG Ally X by Asus. Asus? That's what I thought. But I've been playing with this for over a week now, and I've kind of fallen in love. I don't know if I can recommend it, because for $800, you could just buy this and save a couple hundred. But this is such a big improvement. It reminds me of when the Switch kind of got updated, refreshed, and replaced by the better battery Switch. Except imagine that if it also had a ton of other upgrades that essentially made it a Switch Pro. I did like the rug, but a couple of reasons why I just baseline never used it was it always got really hot, like crazy hot. Also, I just never found it comfortable. It's pretty much as flat as a pancake, as flat as my white butt. <laughs> It just was not very comfortable to hold. And on top of that, they also put these back buttons here that sit right where my fingers want to sit. And I find myself constantly fiddling with them and trying to pry them up like there's some kind of pimple I'm constantly trying to pop. But this new rug, it's taken those back buttons and it's made them these teeny tiny little nubs, which almost look a little ridiculous. But at the same time, yeah, they don't have to be that big, bulky and uncomfortable. They only really just have to be little buttons, just like the buttons on the front. Also, the ergonomic design of this is so much better. It's no longer a flat white butt. It's a big... <laughs> Good lord, I didn't even mean to do that. It is designed so much nicer, there's actually something to hold on to now. And I really like the way it feels. Also has like nice texture to the grips too. I was instantly blown away by the color scheme of the buttons here when I unboxed it. And then I got out my old rug and I realized, yeah, that's just what they were before. But something about putting it on this matte black looks so much nicer. This thing does not get hot. It's actually insane. I sat there recording footage of me trying out all these different games for hours yesterday for b-roll of this video not even a little bit warm apparently they added a thicker heat pipe improved fans larger air intake and a third exhaust vent they did a lot and it stays super cool and quiet the fan doesn't kick up in an overdrive trying to compensate for the heat it's putting out it's just whisper quiet while i play which means i can actually hear the speakers and it helps that the speakers are also a lot louder than before it's easily the most powerful handheld i've messed around with and that's mostly because it's got double the RAM now. 24 gigs of RAM instead of 16. Let's talk about Elden Ring, because that's hot right now, unlike the console. <laughs> Elden Ring on this thing goes hard, man. I still remember checking out Elden Ring on the first ROG Allies, and it looked a little rough. You had to put the settings on low. Incredibly, and I can't believe how fast this technology is moving. Full resolution here, 1920 by 1080, and I'm not really dipping down below 40 frames. And can I throw out there the load times on this thing, with its better RAM and SSD or whatever the heck they did 
into this five seconds from the title screen to playing the game. Stuff like this gets me really hopeful for the Switch too. And just the future of handheld gaming in general. I can't believe where we're at now. Another great example is Red Dead 2. I still remember booting up Red Dead 2 on my original A and Neo, which was the first handheld PC I was sent. And I was getting like 20 frames on that thing and blown away that I could even play it portably. Forget all that. We're a few, few short years removed from that and already full resolution without having to put everything set to low settings like we did back then and then some. I am shook. I am, I am beside myself. It looks gorgeous. This recording I'm showing you right now, this is literally just me recording the screen. If I pull out, you can see the whole console. That's what it looks like on this thing. Not only that, if you did go into the settings, lower the resolution, all of that, I managed to hit 55 frames. We're almost at 60 frames on Red Dead 2 portably with some tweaking. And I don't even know what I'm doing. I didn't even know that in Tunic, if I turned off V-Sync, I could hit 120 frames. My friend Bob told me that because before then I was locked at 90. And I got to tell you, every single thing I tried to pick up and play on this worked flawlessly first time, every time, no issue. And it made me love it and want to try and play more. This is a testament to that extra 12 gigs of RAM because I think a game like Fallout 76, for whatever reason, just needs a little bit more RAM and the 12 gigs in this just ain't cutting it. But this thing runs it like a dream. 45 frames, don't have to mess with anything, full resolution. I can play Fallout 76 for hours and I have been. I hated that game when it came out, but they've done a lot to it and the DLC they released recently brought me back in and I've kind of been loving playing Fallout 76 in bed while Kim watches TV and 90 Day Fiance. I'm there grinding missions and getting caps and shooting ghouls in the head at 45 frames and I've been loving it. A lot of people were telling me to try playing Tunic and I kept putting it off, but I decided to download it on this and wow, I've almost finished it. I loaded it up on my old Rug Ally. I mean, it's like a indie light game. The, the settings were pretty comparable. I don't think it needs any more than the 12 gigs that came with the Rug initially, but the resolution of the Steam Deck is only like 1600 by 900 or something. If I'm wrong, I'll put it here. But seeing it in 1920 next to the lower resolution is pretty clear and obvious and just cool that I can do it in full resolution over here. I tried No Man's Sky and uh, that was kind of the choppiest experience out of all of them, which surprised me. I mean, this game's ported to Switch and runs really nice on Steam Deck. I don't know what it was. I don't know if I just couldn't figure out the settings, but it was like Lock 60, which was great, but it kept dipping. When I moved the camera around, flying to and from a planet was massive lag spikes where it would almost freeze for moments. Maybe there's some finagling I can do there, but it wasn't an easy out the box experience. And that's really what I'm all about. Oh, and then Genshin Impact. I like to fool myself into thinking that now's the time I'm finally gonna play it and give up waiting for the Switch version. And then I never do because I'm still waiting for the Switch version for some, I don't know what's wrong with me. But yeah, that thing works great, looks great. Full resolution, 60 frames. That was all the games I tested. And honestly, I had some really great results from games that wouldn't even load on the old Rogue Ally that are now running fantastic on this thing to just playing these games without my hands not only cramping, but melting at the sheer heat of the exhaust fan. But the experience of using this thing doesn't end there. Downloading the games was so incredibly quick. Red Dead Redemption took 30 minutes to download on the Rug Ally X, and that's a 110 gigabyte game. I still remember the first Steam Deck edition that I got. I would set that aside and leave it downloading for a whole day to play one game. This has double the battery than the old Rug Ally. While I was playing Tunic, I made sure to play Unplugged to see how long it would take for the battery to die. And after an hour and a half session of nonstop playing Tunic, I still had half my battery left. So I could have gone three hours. And that was while it was set to turbo mode, which is the fastest performance mode this has to really juice the most out of the system. That mileage will vary. You know, if I was playing Red Dead on turbo, I wouldn't be surprised if I only got an hour and an hour and a half at best. But there's other performance modes you can dip to and you can run this console on 25 watt turbo mode for as long as you could run the old Rogue Ally at 15 watt mode, meaning it can do twice as much longer. That's like an ad 
bad for Bluetooth. <laughs> the last thing I noted was now there's a one terabyte storage internally in this thing, twice as much as the old one, which of course means you can store more games on it at any one given time. We all know that's great. Having said all that, if I could justify the price hike to 800, it's got double the RAM, double the battery, and double the internal storage. Historically, we do know that those things cost money. The one terabyte version, it's almost $100 more expensive every time because storage has always been stupid expensive. That on top with all the other configuration they've done, moving things around and making it cooler and quieter. I gotta be honest, I do think it's justified in that price. If this is worth its price to anybody, this is absolutely worth the price increase as far as what they've done to this thing. Oh, I didn't even mention the two USB slots at the top now, which I have love. This is so specific for me and maybe some people that watch me if you also bought the Vitcher glasses. Not a sponsor, but I honestly use these things all the time. Why I love having two USB slots? I can lie in bed, which is where I use my bitches. I don't know, man. It's one of life's little joys for me and I get excited to go to bed every night to play games for two hours. What I can do is I can put the glasses in one slot and then keep it on charge on the other slot and it keeps it constantly juiced and I can run it at full 30 watt turbo mode with the glasses, I mean, it's a heaven sent. There's other nice things that come from that too. Like if for whatever reason you wanna plug in a mouse and a keyboard, maybe if you find that easier to install things or you wanna, I don't know, just do anything with it that involves a mouse and keyboard, you got the two slots baked right in. There's just so many more options when you have that second USB-C slot and I'm so glad they added it. I feel like I'm in the future with these handheld consoles, these glasses technology, so many things now making gaming so fun everywhere. That's what really giddies my goat. This thing is easily the best handheld PC I've ever used. I honestly feel like this next to my Steam Deck, next to my Switch is the perfect trifecta. Thanks so much to Rog Ally for sending it over. If you want to pick it up and buy it, I mean, do it. It doesn't affect me in any way. This isn't sponsored. There's no affiliate links. I just wanted to take a look at it. All right, that's it. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye.